with the Rod Fez Show. I want to thank Fred the Hair Genius from Bubbles at the Pentagon City Mall for coming in. Fred, I just went in the uh, in the restroom and I saw my hair. I love it. This is a great haircut. Thank you very much. Good. You're welcome. And it's easy to manage. You so that's really what I like about it. With that. Although you can take a little of that stuff I've given you and muss it up a little bit, you know. Well, I'm leaving it just the way it is. I'm not even going to touch it again until you come in here. I won't wash it or anything. How's that different than the last haircut? <laughs> I bathe. I've been known to bathe. Uh, Bobo, you're bald-headed. What are you going to do with your scalp? You still shampoo it? Uh, yeah, I do. And every time I do it, I wonder why exactly I am doing it. I mean, I, I shampoo my beard, and I actually I put head and shoulders on my bald head. Um, well, has they ever said that you shouldn't, like you should uh, take the soap over it? What else would you do? I don't know. I, I, when I get out of the shower, I actually put, um, like, hand lotion that's got vitamin E and aloe in it all over my head, so it's kind of like a paste wax. Because uh, it, I mean, it makes my scalp feel better because it feels a little raw after the shaving. It's almost like you're rainproofing it. Yeah. yeah. The rain just going to beat off of that thing. It actually Like does. a helmet. It does beat off of it. Now, I got my new national... Speaking of beating off, here comes uh, Sid back into the room. <laughs> you got your what? Your new National Enquirer? My new National Enquirer, the one with Roy Horn on the uh, front saying my life is over. From Siegfried and Roy. Now, I didn't know, inside this one, I didn't know there was a China from the WWE, an X-Pac uh, sex video that's supposedly going to hit the Internet any time now. Apparently, since the Paris Hilton video did so well, everybody else keeps releasing them. The girl from Survivor did it. Now these two. And no one seems to be upset anymore. It's not like when Tommy Lee was screaming, I was going to kill somebody. Now it's almost like they go, let's make this thing. We'll put it out there. We'll complain. We'll split the money. Everything will be cool. Looking at this story in the Inquirer, it looks like China's trying to get it out for the fall season. Like she did the story in the Inquirer just to promote the uh, bootleg sex video. Has anybody seen the China sex video? Uh, how about you, Dubs? You been on it yet? Uh, I've been trying to find it. Actually, it's not hitting the Internet big time for another week. Now, why would it be held off the Internet unless it was being released? So now these things have release schedules. They're editing right now. Yeah, she want, and also she wants to do uh, Letterman and Leno before it's released. So if this is China and Xbox, this has to be considered gay porn. It has to fall into that category. Well, we'll play a Who's on Top when we're watching this thing. And she's supposed to be out promoting her new band. Her new thing is the China Dolls. So she's gone from the WWE to promoting her new band. The China, well, she always had a great uh, talking voice, so I'm sure the singing voice is phenomenal. I've heard a little bit of it, like yeah. her, uh, just some, some of her live stuff. It is terrible. Like, I was, it, it, it's not just the voice, it's the lyrics, too. He, she had to do a cover of China Girl. That's what she should open with. Everyone, thanks for coming out for uh, the debut of the China Dolls album. And don't forget to check out my internet sex video with x -Pac. She has, for some reason, for being that masculine, she has the weakest voice there is. And I don't see where there's going to be a big market for this sex video. You know you want to see it, though. You'll watch it. <laughs> it's celebrity. That's all it is. It's celebrity. She's just in that holding mode right now where finally this is what will happen. Everything will be uh, forgiven with Vince, and she'll just come through with her music one, through the curtain one night, and she'll be back all over again. Oh, whatever happened between her and Vince, why does it go bad? I think that was like a money issue. Mm -hmm. I, th I think, Or she wanted the title or something like that and big money to go along with it. And Vince is never going to be told, you know, I'm the star to him. You know, he he's going to stick with that thing, and he makes the stars. Yeah, but yeah, I've seen him crack with people before. Plenty of times Hogan has been pushing him around. Uh, you know, any time that he thought that uh, he was running the rock or whatever, those guys will go head to head. So people do, you know, they fight back with him. I think the rock is the only one I've seen leave that has done anything, you know, where it got really, really huge. And I guess that's with Vince's blessing. But, like, when Sable left, you know, she was going to go off and be a star. But it's, you know, un it's unusual for somebody to leave Happy Days and want to be a star. So, I mean, it's a real long shot. 
even if you come from, you know, a boy band. It doesn't matter. It's it's very rare. The boy bands, I think they're trying to reunite. The uh, Here's the story that I heard, that Nick Carter broke down during one of these Backstreet Boys recording sessions that he had that he was out in the car because people keep asking him, did you beat up Paris Hilton? Now, did you read this in the National Enquirer? Or... No, I didn't see this one in the Enquirer. This one I think I saw on like a page six or something like that. Mm, same thing. But he, ha but he has gone on entertainment tonight now saying, listen, I don't do things like that. My family doesn't do things like that. We don't hit people. Now, uh, did she, was she accusing him or that's just people trying to guess that? I think it's because she won't talk about it at all. Because we saw that, I thought that they were broke up before you saw that her as black and blue. Yeah, they had broken up, and then the way the alleged story went is they were at some party. She wanted to leave, and he didn't want to, or, he, or vice versa, and he was, like, dragging her out of the place. And next thing you know, she shows up, bruises, and a fat lip. Well, now she'll know it's time to leave. So, so you know, the first... No more mystery about that, Nick. We know you'd have caught a man. The first story that came out was that, you know, Paris... Paris's friends say Nick beat her, you know, and that was in the New York Post. And then that disappeared quick. That was like the one spot where it actually accused him of doing it. Right. And then next thing you know, Paris isn't talking. Paris never said Nick did it. And we but the only people that covered the story is the New York Post. Well, there was there would be other places where they say Paris has shown up bruised. But nobody, would, nobody tied it in with Nick. I mean. Right, yeah. And everyone else was just saying mystery bruises. Hmm. So we'll never get to the bottom of that one. Well, it won't keep me up tonight. I'll sleep like a baby still. <laughs> Even though from drinking coffee ten hours ago, I'm still a little jittery. And a bubble is the same way, Fizz. Why are we drinking coffee if we got baby blood? I don't know. It was the stupidest thing I could do. I'm, I'm, I'm sweating. I feel like Richard Nixon on acid right now. Fizz, you're not a coffee drinker, right? No, I'm not a coffee drinker, but when I went off of the lithium... Yeah, I was really craving coffee and was like hitting the Starbucks like a couple times a week. Is that right? Yeah, it was like I couldn't like if I went to the mall or something or saw a Starbucks. Yeah, and I don't drink coffee, and I would have to go in and get like a one of their mochaccinos or whatever. I'm uh, embarrassed to ask for a decaf frozen coffee. That was that's just too <laughs> sissy fight. It's nothing I want to find myself doing. And the fact that I get it with just a mountain of whipped cream and then caramel swirls on top of that. That doesn't help anything. So it's a coffee Sunday. Oh, yeah. That's the way I have to have it. Sunday, coffee Sunday. I have to have it extra sweet that way, or there's just no way. I used to drink coffee, like, just on Sunday mornings. I would have, like, a cup with breakfast, and that was it. How long ago was this? Long, long time? Yeah, a long time ago. Oh, I think lithium would make you crave... Coffee. I mean, I don't know. It just seemed to be a coincidence. That's when I started drinking it. Was it a stimulant? Lithium, did it affect you as a down or a stimulant? Fez? It was a stimulant because yeah. with the lithium, I was real jimmy leg and shaky and everything. So, kind of similar similarities to like caffeine or whatever. Yeah, I think I was just trying to get uh, mocha flavored lithium. So, after. You, uh, here's the weird thing though. I mean, you were complaining because you're all jimmied up. You go off of it, you attempt to make yourself that way again. Then it was just like I had to have that thing. It was very, very odd. You ought to go back on the lithium. The that lithium was no good. That was really bad. I actually thought that's when you were at your happiest over all three of your drugs. <laughs> there was the Zoloft, the lithium, and the Lamictal. And now the Clonopin. How about Prozac? Mm, Prozac never got off. Uh, I think one of the psychiatrists said if I got all worked up on uh, Zoloft, there was no way he could give me Prozac. Kind of the same family? Yeah, that it would be probably even worse for the agitation and the shaking. And now, everything. when you had your bad day yesterday, I know you said your, Frank, uh, your uh, shrink was away because it's August. Did he ever call you back? No, I never got a call back. Now, how does he know you're not ready? I mean, you were freaked out yesterday. Right. How does he know you're not suicidal? Well, when you go, when you, um, when you call, you get all these options, and like one of them is to the emergency room or something like that. If it's the same thing about what about Bob? They're treating <laughs> you like you're Bob Wiley. 
So I had to try to just say, you know, I tried to look for an operator named Betty. That would just. But seriously, me I mean, they they don't know. I don't understand why they wouldn't call you back. That's what frustrates me about some of these doctors. They have never paid attention to what you're trying to tell them since this thing has started. So far, you haven't been able to handle one drug. No. And I, I called. I left the message yesterday, and the recording said the office was closed until tomorrow. But you would think there would be somebody taking those phone calls. Absolutely. And they're wondering why people are jumping out of windows and stuff, and then they're acting like, well, they were depressed before they take, started taking the antidepressants. So I don't know if I'll get a call back from them tomorrow or not. That's a little late. That's a little late if you happen to be in a blind panic. I'm yeah. Serious. I'm serious about that. It just uh, it frustrates me. Now, my therapist, I got right in to see. So that helped me out. How'd that go? That was uh, that was just a mess. That was just all over the road. Where it's one of those things where all these feelings are there and you don't know why they're there. You have no idea where they're coming from. I think you belong in a group. You think so? I seriously think that it would be good for you. I think you need to be involved in more stuff. That you you got yourself into this thing where you're just either at home or at work. I think you ought to get into a group. Yeah, I mean the 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 one of the things that starts the downward spiral at home is when I just catch myself kind of just sitting there and staring. When it's like I go way deep inside my head. Yeah, well, get some other interest. That's what you need for yourself. Maybe you and Dubs and uh, I guess Cigar Sid can all start a group together. Dubs, would you like to lead today? Maybe we'll start playing some kind of uh, outdoor game together. And just once a week, twice a week. Here's uh, Lars, your amount of Fez. Hey, guys, what's up? Hey. Um, I just want to let Fez know. Fez, uh, Klonopin is the brand name for Klonazepam. And anything that ends in Zepam is a derivative of Valium, because that's Diazepam. So what you're taking is basically like a second cousin to Valium. And that's why it puts you down, and that's why it doesn't do anything for your depression. But it keeps you from getting all anxiety-wise. Yeah, I mean, that was one of the war When I read about this one, that was one of the uh, warning side effects on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah you know, like since if, it is a down, decided, that you could end up down. Yeah, if you decided to stop taking this stuff, you could easily sell it on the corner to some high school kid. And you still have a lot left? <laughs> uh, I think I could probably got, like, about 25 left. 25 left. Somebody was telling me 10 bucks a piece, my friend. So that's a nice uh, little piece of change. There you go. Nice piece of change. Thank you, my friend. That's like having a summer job. Here's uh, Susan. You're on the Ron Fez Show, Suze. Hi, guys. Sorry I missed the show yesterday, but look, if, Fez, if you're that bad off, you need to stress it to your therapist and have your therapist place the call to the shrink. The therapist will get through. When, when I left, the therapist was calling the shrink. But there I mean, you go. I mean, she didn't, she didn't call while I was there, so I would imagine... She ran into the same recording I did. Well, yeah, and she, did she call you last night to find out if you were okay? No. So she's going to call the shrink for you. In the meantime, we still don't... Nobody's going back to check on the patient. Everyone's calling the shrink, no one's calling me. But, I mean, imagine, that, you know, if your leg was broken, you would expect somebody to call you back. I'm serious. I know you're laughing. I'm absolutely serious. You were on the, really on the edge yesterday. And they give you these drugs. You just go along. You take them. You don't have any background in this. You have no idea whether it's going to work or not. Obviously, every drug they give you gives you big side effects. And they make you wait before they take you off them. I really do not get the logic behind this. There, uh, every drug I take affects me just hugely. Yeah. There is no sort of buildup or anything. Or, you know, where it's like, yeah, like with uh, Zoloft, and it was, you're supposed to notice that over four to six weeks. Yeah, 46 weeks. 46. Hmm, that's too long. That's almost a year. <laughs> and that, I didn't feel two months into it, all I felt was bad. And with the agitation. And that's when the restless legs started going, too. And then your only recourse, they want you to go to the emergency room. You know, if you ever have a problem, all they, yeah. all they what are they going to do there? The emergency room. 
It'll make you sit in a room and you'll feel real bad yeah. alone yeah. in a room. Yeah, you can do that at home. Uh, you sit in an emergency room, there's people coming in there with their head wounds. So what are you going to say? I'm agitated and depressed. No, but me first. Yeah, I mean, I swear. One time, I had my I had my face torn off in a in a uh, in an accident, and I had to lay there for like three hours before anybody looked at me. So I can't imagine the guy who comes in going, "I just can't get a grip on life anymore. I'm sad for no reason." You'll be sitting there for days before somebody wants to talk to you. You know they're not going to check you. No, why would they? They're going to go. You're in the wrong place. Why don't you go cry to a therapist? Thanks, Susan. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the call, Susan. Thank you. Mm. Uh, thank you, Fred the Hair Genius. You always do such a fine job for us. You're just the best. Simply the best. Nice, nice work, buddy. Fred the Hair Genius, he, he's, at, he's at Bubbles at the Pentagon City Mall. For an appointment, you can call 703-415-2040. Well, uh, Fezzi, we're back here tomorrow and one week from tomorrow. We're doing a live gig starting tomorrow night. We'll start giving out those power cards for Dave and Busters. Make sure you're listening right here. Same bat time, same bat station. Yeah, that's power cards for the Million Dollar Midway at Dave and Busters. Week for tomorrow, that's at the White Flint Mall in Bethesda, Maryland. Bobo, thank you for coming in, too. It was nice hanging with you. Thanks. You guys are the best. Next time, bring your sitar or whatever you happen to be playing. Your oboe, whatever crazy didgeridoo, whatever nutty <laughs> instrument you find yourself into. Your moss-covered credenza or whatever it is. <laughs> That's it for the Rod of Fez show. Thanks for listening on WJFK FM in Washington, D.C., Live 105.7 in Baltimore, and 1010 The Buzz in Tampa Bay.